Dear colleagues, you are welcome to Module 6, Implementing the Strategy. This is the sixth of nine modules in a blended learning course designed to support the use of a toolkit for developing, implementing and monitoring adult education strategies available on the DEMA website. We hope that you will find the content of value to your work. On this slide, you will see a list of the partner countries involved in the DEMA project. They are Cyprus, two partners, and one partner each from Ireland, Slovenia, Slovakia, and Belgium. For more information on the project and the partners, please visit the DEMA project website. At the end of this module, learners will be able to describe the stages of the strategy implementation process and explain the principles of organisational hierarchy and accountability of strategy implementation. There are eight interweaving tasks in the strategy implementation process. They are Planning, organizing, directing, leading, integrating, controlling, communicating, and innovating. We will be addressing a number of these in more detail. Strategy implementation is the process that turns strategies and plans into actions in order to accomplish strategic objectives and goals. We suggest that implementing your strategic plan is as important or even more important than your actual strategy. The process of strategy implementation can be presented as following. The first step is establishing the organisational hierarchy. The second is allocating resources. The third, setting control processes. And the fourth, structuring accountability. When we look at stage one, establishing the organisational hierarchy. Three points come to mind. Organising. Appoint the leader or project manager for the implementation and give that person executive power. Directing, leading, integrating and controlling. Organise in a clear and transparent manner in order to achieve an explicit hierarchical structure of decision-making points. Communicating. Clearly define communications channels and rapporteurs. Stage 2. Allocating resources. Firstly, there are three main types of resources we are concerned about in an action plan. The human, the financial and the infrastructural resources. There are three points arising. Planning. All types of resources should be firmly defined, planned and guaranteed. Organising. This is how resources, once allocated, are organised, directed and integrated. It requires a comprehensive flowchart that should preferably be designed by the project manager and approved by stakeholders and collaborators. Thirdly, controlling. The flowchart should assign control mechanisms. Stage 3. Structuring accountability. A precise structure with defined responsibilities within the flowchart components should be identified. There are three points. A designated person responsible for activities within that particular component should be identified the interweaving structure of responsibilities 
should be laid out clearly for direction purposes. And it is important that all components with defined responsibilities are integrated. Stage four, setting controlled processes. There are four points in this stage. Planning. Controlling mechanisms and procedures should be defined. Two, organizing. It is crucial that the control process is managed independently. Three, directing. Performers of the controlling procedures should be appointed by the institution responsible. And four, communicating. Findings during the controlling procedures and assessments should be communicated to the project manager. Here are three practical tips. The action plan developed as outlined in module five should be clear and concise. Each year, a very precise annual plan should be made with clearly defined measurable objectives, schedules and responsibilities. And third, objectives set in the annual action plan should be integrated into the implementation process which would include responsibilities, controlling mechanisms, and communication channels. Here is an example of a strategy from Ireland. SOLAS is the agency tasked with implementing and funding further education and training in Ireland. The SOLAS corporate plan sets out what SOLAS will do over a three-year period to lead change in further education and training from the perspective of ensuring relevant, high quality further education and training, which is delivered to a very high standard. Follow the links to see the SOLAS corporate plan and the SOLAS action plan. This will give you an insight into its strategy. This concludes Module 6, Implementing the Strategy. The DEMA project partners hope you found this content useful and that it will support you in your work. Thank you very much.